Hey, this is Paolo from the MB Academy, and today we're going to be taking a look at the steps in the track 20 Questions by Ivy Love. So, this is the original track. And this is my recreation. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos, and if you want to get access to preset and the project files, you can become a member of preset pass. The link is in the description below. Don't forget that if you want to get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists, and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just gotta visit dmbacademy.com. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so here I have an initialized grand piano. And the reason why we're not serum yet is because the music theory behind these steps is very important. So let's just take a quick look at the music theory behind this sound. This track is written in B flat minor, this note right here. And so let's just build or scale from this note. One trick that I like to do is to place one note and drag it before the actual MIDI clip starts. Let me just color this blue. And now let's just apply a formula of the minor scales, which is tone, semitone, tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone. There you go. Now, if you want to learn more about music theory and harmony, we actually have a course on this on our DMB Foundations program. The link is in the description below. Now, after we have these notes right here, I like to control C to copy and then control V to paste it and then hold shift and an arrow key to paste it on different octaves. And now we have kind of a root to build our progression. So if we now go to the right, you can see that we have our actual MIDI clip and then some information before the start of the MIDI clip. So let's just start with the progression of this sound. The first chord is an F minor. Then the next one is a C sharp. Then the next one is a D sharp. And the last one is an A sharp or B flat. Now this doesn't sound anything like the track. And the reason why is because we haven't built chords from these bass notes. So let's begin with this F. Now we have a grid right here. And so let's start adding the notes. So to build a minor chord, we need to count three semitones up. And then from that note right here, we need to count four. One, two, three, four. And so this is our F minor chord. Cool. Now, as you can see, this notes here help me to see if I'm staying inside the grid. And they also allow me to know which notes add to give a more interesting character into the score. Like that notes right there adds a lot of tension. This one is cool. Let's hear another one right here. And I'll split it in a more humanized way. Like this. Whoops. There you go. Now we can change this one maybe here. And as you can see, this grid allows you to build chord progressions very, very easily. That's a very good chord right there. So let's go back into the actual sound. Sorry that I got distracted right there. And we have an F minor. And next we have a C sharp major. So now... Very nice transition. Then we have a D sharp minor. As you can see, I'm staying in the grid right here. 
and then B flat minor. Now, this still is not sounding like the track. It kind of does, but it's not the progression we're looking for. So we need to do a few things to make this more interesting. So the first one being bringing this C down here. So this whole F minor is now sitting on top of its fifth, which will be C. Very powerful chord. And now we need to bring this chord right here one octave up. And one thing to notice is that this chord has an F and a G sharp, and this chord also has an F and a G sharp. And here we have a C, and now this other chord has a C sharp. So this is very similar. Now maybe we can add this C on top of this chord. And so instead of being only this, now it is this with a really awesome tension. Now if we bring this chord down, we can see that it shares the same notes from an F minor, but instead of sitting on top of its fifth, which will be C, it's now sitting on top of a C sharp, which makes this chord to be not an F minor anymore, but to be a C major with a seventh. So now the progression will be very smooth. Now let's bring it up because that's what the actual track does. And there you go. That right there is our MIDI. So if we actually drag this on top of our instrument right here, we will get that sound. So now let's jump into Serum and let's build the actual sound. Okay, so here I have an initialized Serum and this now sounds like a mess. Yep. So let's just build the sound. First, we need to make it simpler. So for that, we're gonna load sine waves. There you go. And we're also gonna load the wavetable called mellow but unstable here on oscillator B. Very weird sound. Now let's add some unison here on both those layers. We're gonna do seven. The reason why is because here on seven or on odd numbers, we have a voice actually staying on tune right there in the middle. So now we have cool sound, but it's still not what we're looking for. Let's just bring this master down so we don't clip it a lot. We kind of have like this flume characteristics into the sound. Like if we run everything through a filter. Kind of sounds like those um, plume album vibes. But anyway, I'm just showing you ways in which you can just take a different direction with the sound. So we have this sine wave and this mellow button unstable, actually instable wavetable. Let's bring this wavetable position up. There you go. And now let's filter oscillator B with a bandpass. And we just want this oscillator B to add those frequencies right there. Actually, it'll be very, very nice to modulate this. Like if we bring the oscillator A back. Like that, right? Maybe on triplets. But anyway, let's just go back into our sound. There you go, that's what we want. Now let's add a noise, but we're gonna add an attack and we're gonna add this kick right there, which at the beginning, it kind of sounds weird. <laughs> it's not really what we're looking for in a melodic sound. But that is because we don't have the one-shot mode enabled. So in reality, this whole sound 
just this click is the attack of a kick. But the reason why it sounds like this is because it's getting looped. If we bring the pitch down, you can see how it brings the speed of the looping down. So let's put it on one shot mode and this will give us the attack on our stabs. Very subtle, but when we run it through delay and reverb, let me bring the level up, we now notice that hit. So if we play all of this, we know that there's some type of physical stimulation playing this organic quote-unquote instrument, which is pretty interesting. Now let's turn on the hyper, let's add some chorus, let's even add a phaser here at the end. Now let's filter this delay, let's set it on eighth notes, let's bring the mix down. There you go, that's very cool. Let's bring the frequency of the phaser down and the depth also. Nice, we can always change the attack. And maybe even add an envelope here on the sound. And if we want to manually shape or transient, we can do it with another full mapped on the level. and experiment with different noises. That right there is very cool. So now if we play this on top of the track, this is what we get. Now without it, nothing. Now with it, There you go, that's our sound right there. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any of your future videos. And if you wanna get access to the preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. Don't forget that if you wanna get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists, and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just gotta visit dmbacademy.com. So thank you so much for watching, hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.